34 degree day at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia for an interconference matchup of the Bills and the Eagles. With superstar Randall Cunningham sidelined by a fractured leg, this injury battered Eagles team after starting at 4-0 has lost seven of its last eight games. While Jim Kelly and his Buffalo Bills have struggled recently, losing three of their last four. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert along with Paul McGuire. And for the Buffalo Bills, despite that record of 8-4, and four, these have not been pleasant times. They have been hard hit by injury, key injuries to very important players. And suddenly, uh, there is concern around the Bills. Well, there has to be. You know, for three and a half years, this team has been healthy. They've ever gone through this kind of a problem. When they had some people injured, they had backup people that could fill in. Now they don't. I think the most interesting part is to take a look at their linebacker situation. For years, they've had the, some of the better linebackers in the National Football League. When people wanted to trade, they wanted to trade with Buffalo for linebackers. They are down to four healthy linebackers, and they play a 3-4 defense. And both Buffalo and Philadelphia have had difficulty in stopping the run, and that's where the Eagles would like to take advantage with the combination of the impressive rookie running back who's had his ups and downs, Vaughn Hebron, and the veteran Herschel Walker, who's had a solid season. He really has had a solid season. Herschel Walker he leads his team in rushing and in pass receiving. And the one thing that Herschel Walker does this year that he hasn't been doing in the past, and it's good for Herschel, is that when he gets to the line of scrimmage, he doesn't dance anymore, Marv. He just hits the hole, trying to get what it gives him. And there's the head coach of the Eagles in his third year as head man, in fact, rewarded with a one-year contract extension following last season, Rich Kotite. And Marv Levy in his seventh season as Buffalo head man actually broke into the NFL as the Eagles special teams coach back in 1969. The Eagles have won the toss and they will receive. Eagles coming off the Monday night loss to the Cowboys in Dallas, 23-17. Philadelphia did come back from a 16-0 deficit but fell short. While Buffalo last Sunday lost to the L.A. Raiders 25-24, a game that saw the Bills hurt themselves with turnovers. And Tim Brown just killed the Bills last week. Ten receptions, 183 yards. The kickoff by Christie. In by Sakahama on the return. The opening kickoff by Sikahema with the fumble recovered by Richard Harvey. You know, this is really something unusual by Sikahema coming here. Now, look at that ball. He's not hit. The, no one hit the ball. The ball just came out of his arms. He didn't have a grip on it. The recovery with Thomas Smith, number 28, gets the ball. But look at this. He's just tackled there. And when he goes down, the ball pops out of his hand. Fuller, number 33, is the man that made the tackle. And it was Thomas Smith on the ball, not Harvey. So Buffalo from the 25-yard line. And it's Vernon Thomas hit for a loss. Mike Flores, the left defensive end, made the stop as we look at that Buffalo Bills offensive line. The one change here, Glenn Parker starting at left guard for Jim Richer, who has been bothered by shoulder problems, in fact, was lifted in the second half last week. And it's Thomas and Carwell Gardner starting in the backfield. Gardner back from a pulled hamstring. And once again, Thomas is stopped. At times last week, Paul, the Buffalo Bills actually went with a conventional huddle-up offense that did not work. That front seven for the Eagles, Flores, Harmon, Refrigerator, Perry, and Simmons, the linebackers, Joyner, Hager, and Thomas will also see Byron Evans making it back from a broken arm. He'll see limited action. And uh, a look at the backfield when they go to the dime. Ben Smith back from injury. And Wes Hopkins will check in. It's a third down and nine for the 24. And Kelly throws for the first time and it's broken up. William Thomas got a piece of it. The pass intended for Bill Brooks. You know, when you set up in this uh, offense that the Bills have here, they put Thurman Thomas in motion, so that means there are, there's no one else in the backfield. You know they're going to throw the football. The linebackers dropped off. That time, William Thomas, number 51, linebacker, covering Brooks, coming across the middle, broke up the play. 
And the field goal unit has checked in. This will be a 41-yard attempt by Steve Cresty, who does have good range. 14 of 19 overall this season. going off to the right and the Bills not able to take advantage following the fumble of the opening kickoff by Sikahama as expected the shape is new and beautiful as expected it's quieter and has more space now I'm winning with interstate batteries and this year we won the ultimate NASCAR race we won the Daytona 500 Interstate has a lightning-fast restocking system. So we had a fresh, powerful battery for a great start and a winning finish. So get the battery that won the Daytona 500. Wherever you see this sign, Interstate Batteries. We check them before you buy them. For fresh power, guaranteed. There's three parts to this thing. It's the center, the holder, the kicker, and it all is all as well. Watch it. Here's the center. That's down. Right holds the ball perfectly. And Christie just shanks the ball. He pulls it left. And this, an interested observer on the sideline. Yes, by Sikahema, very, very pleased that that opening kickoff fumble did not cost. For the size of relief. Thank you. The Eagles take over from their 24-yard line. Headline. Across the 30, he's the rookie from Virginia Tech. Matt Darby made the stop on Hebron. A look at the Eagles offensive line. Now the key is the left tackle number 68, Tom McHale, making his first NFL start at left tackle because of the injury suffered by Brian Baldinger. Bobby Bristol, the quarterback. Walker and Hebron on the running backs, Bailey and Williams with the tight end, Bavaro. A look at the four wides. It's a second and one at the 33. Mitchell Walker with a straight-ahead move, looking for the first down. Keith Gilganius on the tackle, and the Eagles do pick it up. The front seven of Buffalo, Mike Lotus for the injured Jeff Wright, who's out with a knee. Bennett, Patton, Gilganius, and Talley are the linebackers. Gilganius for the injured Mark Maddox. Washington starting for James Williams, who has been benched. And when they go to the dive, Scholes and Smith check in. First down at the 35. No score here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. We're just underway. Calvin Williams in motion. Prester couldn't find anybody. Goes for the short move to Hebron. And he gets to the 40. Stopped by Mickey Washington. Washington in his third year out of Texas A&M. Starting at the left quarterback position for James Williams. Uh, you want to see how many people are going to put on Bruce Smith? How about three? Actually, Hebron is one of the guys, too. There's McHale. There goes Bruce down. Now, inside is Shad, and 45 is Hebron. He was there to help out. He becomes the guy that they just dumped the ball off to, and he picks up eight yards. But they actually had three people that time on Bruce Smith. We chatted with Bruce last night and asked his reaction in going up against Tom McHale, a guy who never played left tackle. He seems to be yeah. smiling right through us. Uh, well, kind of laughing. <laughs> Second down and three, and again the straight-ahead move. This time Hebron, and he has a another eagle first down. The strong safety Henry Jones made the stop. The Philadelphia Eagles are obviously out of the playoff hunt. And they are playing for two things now. Randall Cunningham's return, and they hope to see him in either. Of course, the jury is out as to when he will make it back. We talked about it with Rich Kotite, and he said, well, it's up to the doctors, but they hope to see him either against New Orleans two weeks from now or the final game against San Francisco. Brister. Completes to Walker. And Herschel able to extend to the marker. Cornelius Bennett have the wraps around Herschel Walker. You've got to give credit to the Buffalo defensive secondary because now the one to Hebron a few moments ago that he picked up eight yards, and this one to Herschel. Herschel, they're just play-action pass. Watch Herschel. He goes up. He is not the intended receiver. They fake to Herschel. Now, he's just there's no one to block, so I'll slip out and sit here. Brister finds it because there's no place else to go, and then Herschel Walker picks up a first down. 
I mentioned the two factors the, the Eagles are playing for, aside from looking to the return of Cunningham, they also have to look to next year when the Eagles figure to go through numerous changes, all kinds of speculation. Hebron lost his balance. Lotus able to cover up. Have you noticed that the Eagles in a running attack? They have not run the ball once to the left where Bruce Smith is lined up, where McHale is. All of their runs have been from the center over to the right to stay away from Bruce Smith. Tom McHale signed as a free agent back in early September. He had spent five years with Tampa Bay, but for the most part, as a right guard. Philadelphia has been hard hit by injury on the offensive line. That was intended for the tight end. Mark Bavaro. Cornelius Bennett almost has this ball, and they know that you're going to go to Bavaro. He's having a sensational year, and here's Bavaro sitting up. Bennett's there almost makes the interception. you got to get it there faster. He knows that it's his fault and not Bavaro's fault because Bavaro went where he was supposed to go. Brister didn't get it there fast enough. It's a third down and nine. The Eagles go with four wideouts. The former Buffalo Bill. James Lofton has come on. And Brister floats one. That was in the area of Lofton. Looked to be miscommunication there. Well, you don't know if the, if the ball slipped out. Yeah, Lofton turned in. It looked like Brister was throwing an out pattern. And that time they had Herschel Walker helping with McHale on Bruce Smith. It looked like the ball just got away from him. And Jeff Fiegels will come on for the first time. He has had a solid season, averaging 41 yards per punt. Russell Copeland, rookie from Memphis State, is back. Fiegels handling the low snap. And Copeland let it bounce, and then decided to pick it up and took the hit immediately. So the Bills and the Eagles are scoreless. We'll be right back. Ah, yes, the sights and sounds surrounding Veteran Stadium. Low calorie bread. In Philly. Yes, of course. I found out in the press box why a lot of the members of the media eat so much up there. They, you know, there's a saying around the media, if it's free, it's, it has no calories. Nine minutes, 11 seconds remaining. In this first quarter. And the Bills start out from the 15-yard line. Oh, well, once again, Thurman Thomas getting the call. Thurman Thomas coming into today with 1061 yards, leading the AFC, leads the NFL in total yardage with 1,369. The second and eight at the 17. <laughs> Kelly with a bullet pass to Bill Brooks, but he is stopped in his tracks by the left corner, Mark McMillan. We mentioned at the start the number of injuries that have hit Buffalo in recent weeks, but Philadelphia throughout the course of the season has been just decimated. Look at this list of key players. We're not, and we're not talking about hamstring injuries or, or, or little sprains and things. We're talking about broken legs and things that have happened to this team. Broken boats. I mean, it is incredible. For example, the Philadelphia offensive line today starting a seventh different combination. It's a third down and three. Thomas. When they run that direct snap to Thomas, Philadelphia really was not waiting on it. They were looked like they were coming after. Kelly, William Thomas, 51, was faking blitz, but the direct snap to Thurman Thomas. Thurman went off, and he's holding his arm. Here's the play. It is a direct snap to Thurman Thomas. Excellent blocking on the line. First down. Yeah, it's looked like Thurman is banged up. Kenneth Davis has, has checked in, and Davis gets the call. Picking his way across the 35-yard line. The rookie from Colorado, Leonard Renfro, made the stop. And they're checking out Thurman Thomas. I mean, with all the injuries the Bills have had, this is one they don't need. 
probably been the only guy in the backfield. They all stayed healthy, along with Kenneth Davis. Second and seven. And Kelly's pass broken up, and a penalty flag is down. Don Beebe, the intended receiver, and it will be interference against the left corner, Mark McMillan. You know why? Because his left arm is on the back of Beebe. He goes over it to make the play. And it's an excellent play, except for one thing. You can't touch the offensive receiver. Watch his left arm. You see it on the back of Beebe, the and the official right there to the left is the guy that's going to throw the flag because he First sees down. it. Referee Johnny Greer with the announcement. Mark McMillan goes only five foot seven, 160 pounds out of Alabama. He is the starting left corner. Sees a lot of action with Eric Allen, a man that teams do not like to test on the other side. It's Davis on a draw play. Kenneth Davis, guy who hits the holes so well, a slashing style runner in his eighth season out of Texas Christian. And he's come on for Thurman Thomas, who was shaken up just a moment ago. Second down and seven at the 46 yard line. Kelly with a screen that does not work. William Thomas was right there to pop Kenneth Davis. You want to, you want to know a guy that, that did his homework? And that's William Thomas, 51. He's watched and studied. He reads his screen. It's usually with uh, Thurman Thomas in there. But Davis is in there now, but watch him read this. Watch 51. Bang, bang. The ball's there. He's there. The lineman had no chance. The worst part about it is the linemen are looking back at the receiver, and here goes Thurman Thomas going in for x-rays. And we'll pass on a report as soon as it comes across. It's a third down and nine from the 44. And Kelly Alouche is almost intercepted by Wes Hopkins. The pass intended for Don Beebe. Wes Hopkins was playing center field now Jim Kelly is hurt he took a shot I think it was Clyde Simmons who hit him just as he threw the ball from the outside number 96 watch Clyde Simmons he gets bang by Fina and bang he drops Kelly and Kelly lands on his right elbow it's a fourth and nine and Chris Moore will punt from his 30 by Sikahama who fumbled on the opening kickoff his back and Moore just did get it off. Sikahema with the fair catch out of the 20-yard line. A 36-yard punt. The Eagles will go back to the offense. No score here in the first. <laughs> I'll tell you where the time goes. Every year I spend 3,000 hours. Way Jim Kelly testing the arm. You saw him take the shot at the end of that series and uh, does not look good. And we're told he is suffering from a bruised right shoulder here's how it occurred Clyde Simmons gets around Fina and he hits Kelly as he throws and he lands right on his shoulder with Clyde Simmons on top well, now, Frank Reich is loosening up on the other side and Kelly very gingerly trying to get off the uh, throws on the sideline as as the Eagles go to the offense Thurman Thomas has been taken back to the locker room for x-ray as Brister throws on first down it looked like Christian Walker got tripped up but no call. Well, they will never call that play because what happens is he stepped on his foot. I mean, it wasn't intentional. They're both looking at the ball. They're both looking downfield. You, you can't be watching your feet. Herschel comes out of the backfield, and Goganius was going with him, I think, across the middle. And here comes Herschel. That is Goganius, number 50. And Herschel, they just trip up. He doesn't touch him. That's a good non-call. It'll be a second. 10 of the 21, five and a half remaining. First quarter with no score. A handoff to Hebron. Goes the other way. Has no daylight. And then is hauled down for a loss of five, and a penalty marker is thrown. Phil Hansen, the left defensive end, with the refs on the rookie, Vaughn Hebron. Bobby Brister tried to put the refs on Hansen. <laughs> As Hansen goes by, he tried to grab him. This puts an awful lot of pressure on people. When you're running around, you got a back running all over the place. And besides, I mean, I don't know if they'll take the, the penalty here because uh, it's during the play, and they lost about six yards on the play anyway. 
But from the spot of the foul, then it's another 10. Illegal block in the back. Number 73, offense is declined. Third down. There's already a loss of six yards. Why take the play? Holmes is the guy. And, and here, here it comes here. You're going to see the block. Here's Holmes. And that is a block in the back on Daryl Talley. But before that, when Hebron was running, Bobby Brister grabs Hanson by the head. That's the right guard, number one draft pick from Jackson State. Lester Holmes, who has played well. Four wideouts now for the Eagles. And Brister connects with Lofton. Short pickup for the former Buffalo Bill. Right here, let's go to Jim Lampley for an update. And we go to the Astrodome to check in on the hottest team in the league, the Oilers. Cleveland Browns getting Eric Metcalf involved early. Another former University of Miami quarterback, this one Benny Testaverde, throws to Metcalf over the middle, 49 yards, TD, 7-0. Cleveland in the first. Back to Marvin Paul. All right, thank you, Jim. Yes, Houston, red hot, seven straight wins. And Fiegels with his second pod. Fair catch, handled by Copeland. 25 remaining in this first quarter 34 yard punt we'll be back in a moment images presented by honda quarterback efficiency rating steve young at san francisco leading the way uh, jim kelly is number nine no eagles on the rankings with randall cunningham out of action and jim kelly who uh, took that shot hurt his shoulder in the last series is going to give it a go he is he is on the field although frank wright did warm up yeah and, and kelly you know it's hard to get him out of the ball game i guess uh his next life he'll come back as a linebacker yeah, he has certainly taken his share of shots once again this season oh. and kelly took a hit there coughed it up wes hopkins on the recovery and the eagles take over it's one of these things when you don't expect someone to be there. They're running a bootleg pattern, and we want to slow this thing down if we can and show it to you. They run, he runs a bootleg pattern, and when he does, I think William Thomas, number 51, is blitzing on the outside. Watch when Kelly turns. Davis is going to go to Kelly's left. There it is. Here's the bootleg. Now, as soon as he turns, here's the linebacker right in his face. It's Seth Joyner. I'm sorry. And then Hopkins picks it up. But when Kelly turned, he never saw Joyner. Didn't expect him to be there. Back up safety man, Wes Hopkins on the recovery. Eagles take over at the Buffalo 35-yard line. Again, the cutback by Hebron. And now here's it from the crowd as once again he tried to cut away and lost yardage. Hebron's got to learn something that Herschel Walker has learned. It it's taken him a long time to do it. And that's go to the hole. And when you get to the hole, if it's not there, get as much as you can. All this dancing is going to do is going to lose yardage for you. He lost six on one play. He just lost another one here. So now you're looking at second and 11. You're taking yourself out of field position. On Hebron, a starter earlier in the season after a surprising training camp. He was not drafted. He was signed as a free agent. Had fumble problems. Went to the bench. But he's back in action. And Buster able to complete to Walker. Herschel Walker on the reception. Brought down by Marcus Patton. Herschel Walker, the Eagles' leading receiver and has the most receptions by an NFC running back. And what happens is Marcus Patton is right here, is covering Herschel one-on-one. -on -one. And this is the matchup that they want. They want the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now here's Bruce Smith on McHale on the outside. McHale's here, and Hebron misses. The Eagles just a yard short of the first down. It'll be a third and one. Walker's second catch of the day has 49 receptions for the season. Keith Sherman now in the Eagle backfield. And it's Sherman picking up the first down. Stopped by Marcus Patton. Kind of surprised to see him go that way with Bruce Smith over there. Sherman has back to the sideline. He's been bothered by a, a sore knee in his fifth year out of Texas A&I. He had emerged as the Eagles' feature runner second half of last season, but lost his starting job to the rookie Hebron. Two it's, tight ends. It's a first out of the 24. Yes, Favaro and Maurice Johnson in there right now. On the slant, Walker with a short game. See, this is the difference in Herschel Walker this year as in the past. Herschel Walker, when he goes to the hole, there's no more dancing. 
and he's going to pick up what's there, which is about three and a half to four yards. But watch Herschel Walker straight ahead. He has his shoulders square. He's going into the hole, protecting the ball, and taking what's there, and not trying to wait and dance and lose yardage. Picked up about four. It's a second and six. At the 20, Eagles stay with the double tight end. And at 40 remaining, first quarter, Eagles and Bills are scoreless. Brister off the short set, has a first down, combining with the rookie Victor Bailey. Now this was an audible. Bobby Brister looked it up on the outside and he saw Nate Odoms playing off of Victor Bailey. So he called, he even looks at Victor Bailey. You'll, you'll see Bobby Brister, he'll look. Here he is here. He looks right here is Bobby, and he looks out here to Bailey because he sees Nate Odoms way off, and he, just, he looks right at him, and he tells him, I'm going to throw it out to you. Get outside, and they pick up the first down. Good read. He goes now to Buffalo 12. Walker tried to make the turn, but could not. Matt Darby on the stop. Matt Darby starting at free safety for the injured Mark Kelso, who once again has suffered a concussion and is out of action. And they, they lost count of the concussions of Kelso. You know, it's really something. Kelso goes out on a concussion, and Matt Darby comes in, and he said, you know how important Kelso is to this football team? And he said it publicly to the press. He said, I, I missed the read on Brown's touchdown that cost him the game. He said, it was my fault. That is very unusual. Here's Walker on a second down and five. Herschel Walker getting the call. Matt Darby, a fifth-round draft pick last year out of UCLA, and he has stepped into that uh, crucial role as quarterback of the secondary with Kelso out of action. And they're going to have to hit, run one more play before the end of the quarter. And I think that if they don't make this first down here and or touchdown, they will kick the field goal. They've got to put some points on the board, even though they're not going anywhere. Eighth play of the drive. It's a third down and two at the four. And Brister will throw. Intended for Walker. Herschel Walker wasn't even paying attention. He never really looked at the ball. He was wrapped up pretty good by Marcus Patton. But he was open. Herschel Walker goes out into the flat on the right. Brister throws. Look at Herschel. He's not even paying attention. Bobby Brister knows it. He said, man, turn around. And the Eagles will go for the field goal with seven seconds left in the quarter. It's a fourth and two at the four. 21-yard attempt by Matt Barr, who has certainly had his ups and downs. look at the holdout to see if, if, if all things are considered the strings and everything are all in place Low they snap. seem to be forward yeah but the, but this but it's there he has nothing he just pushes the ball how can this happen to me well Fiegel's handled the low snap and put it down and bar is now eight for 12 but misses from 21 yards away in the final seconds of this scoreless first quarter when you're talking Time about out. missing Eagles, from 21 yards one. away. That's only Five one yard further than an extra point. The Eagles hearing the boos have called for a timeout with three seconds remaining. Well, they would like to, the fans would like to see him just pass bar up into the, into the <laughs> yes. They want to talk to him for a moment. Two years ago, this franchise appears to be perched on the edge of greatness last year 11 and 5 they were 8-0 at home and uh, they have certainly fallen back uh, due to injuries free agent signings key players departing it's a team that has been dismantling two key free agents Seth Joyner and Clyde Simmons 
the focus of much speculation as to whether they will also go elsewhere. What did Kotite say to you yesterday about his quarterback situation at Shula? <laughs> that was a great line. Yes, he has. He said that in his three years, he has seen more quarterbacks here than, as he put it, as uh, Kelly is able to complete to Phoebe to end this first quarter, than Don Shula has seen in his 30-odd years of coaching in the NFL. End of one, no score. Then you flip the hat. You're late, and you got the wrong hat. Sit in the corner. Ooh, no respect at all. Then you raise the hat. Hey, this thing's so alive. Wrong hat. Then you slam the hat. Then you send the hat. Oh, I need landing instructions. Wrong hat. Then you smooth the hat. Take it easy, will you? I think I'm having a hat attack. You need the right hat. It's your hat. Now I'll get some respect. When regular drills hold you back, send it Well, the Buffalo Bills came into today's game with a host of injury problems, and uh, they suffered in the first quarter. Thurman Thomas went back to the dressing room for x-rays, and the x-rays, fortunately for uh, Thurman, and the Bills came up negative on his forearm, and it's expected that he will return. Jim Kelly took a couple of good shots, hurt his shoulder. Second quarter underway, and movement in the line leading to the penalty markers. John Ball Davis. Start, 65 offense prior to the snap. Still second down. You know, you're looking at things that the Buffalo Bills in the past really didn't do. I mean, here they are second in about a half a yard, and, and now it's second in almost six. And here are the, you know, the stats 24 yards total for the Buffalo Bills, four yards passing in the first quarter. That won't get it done. Second down and five from the 25 yard line. Davis stopped by Harmon. We're set for another update. Let's go to Jim Lampley in New York. Bob, the giant running game is pounding the Colts. Rodney Hampton had 88 yards and a touchdown in the first quarter. So in the second quarter, Bill Sims with that perfect 17-yard strike to Chris Calloway. Giants botched the PAT, but already they lead the Colts 13-zip. Back to Marvin Paul. All right, Jim, a third and four as we resume. Nice catch made by Bill Brooks. Had a reach down at the shoe top and came up with a reception. It's good for 12 and a first down for Buffalo. Bill Brooks has great hands, and Bill Brooks comes underneath, but there's nobody on him. And Kelly reads it right away. He sees the blitz is coming up the middle, and he sees Brooks coming in. Bill Brooks goes down, but look at there really is no one on him. No one's covering Brooks. And Buffalo first down at the 37. Kelly looking okay, completing to Brooks. Jim Kelly, despite injuring that shoulder, looking very sharp here. That's a 20-yard advance. They're going to take a shot at Kelly every chance they get. He throws. And he just, he, that's Andy Harmon. All he's trying to do is hold Kelly up. He never really hit him. And Buffalo in the no huddle. First down at the 42. It's Davis. Good blocking, and Davis able to break the tackle and has another Buffalo. First down, William Thomas finally got him out of bounds. That was some really excellent blocking, and it, it, it's an off-tackle play. They're not going to put Thurman Thomas in unless they have to. All right, here's Davis now. Look at Parker's coming out, number 74, gets a block. Now Davis, number 65, gets an excellent block, and then Davis himself. Makes an excellent run. 18-yard run. It's Davis again. He found a hole on the left side, and it's Thomas on the tackle. Kenneth Davis playing for Herman Thomas, who hurt his forearm in the first quarter. And now we receive word from the bench that his return is doubtful. A moment ago, we were told that he was expected to return. Well, particularly the way Davis is going, there's no need to rush him back in as Kelly is able to complete for a first down. Pete Metzelars with the catch, his first of the day, and number 48 for the season. The leading receiver of the Buffalo Bills, and my ex-neighbor used to live up the road for me. But anyway, Pete Metzelars coming across the middle. Kelly finds him in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and now Hiss is the leading receiver. He comes all the way from the left-hand side. Look at Metzelars in that zone. Gets in front of Miano and makes the play. First and goal from the 10. Kelly dumps it off to Davis. 
Davis dancing a bit and is hit down. It's a loss on the play. Clyde Simmons actually makes the play on this. When Davis gets the ball, Clyde Simmons is there. Davis has no place to go. And when he turns back inside, Clyde Simmons gets help from everybody else on the defensive line. Loss of two, second down. Second and goal from the 12. The Bills come in at eight and four. They have dropped three of the last four. They're second in the AFC East. A game behind Miami, only a half game in front of the Jets, who beat the Skins yesterday. Brooks took the hit from the middle linebacker, Brent Hager. Hager playing for the injured Byron Evans, although Evans has been activated and is available for limited action today. It's a third and goal down at the six-yard line. Four minutes gone by, second quarter. The Bills and Eagles are scoreless here at Beckman Stadium in Philadelphia. Marv Albert with Paul McGuire on a very cold 34-degree day. Kelly had to audibleize. Kelly took the long look. Can't find anyone. And now throws. Intercepted. It is, it is picked off by Eric. He threw it to a crowd, and it's Eric Allen with his fourth interception of the season. This is something that I saw Bledsoe do last week for New England and throw into a crowd, and this is something you don't expect a veteran to do. Kelly is really running for his life. Watch this. Here he's running. He gets away. He gets away again, and then he throws. He sees Brooks is wide open. The ball is behind Brooks, and it goes off his hand. Allen makes the interception. throws on Rob, but take a look here. Here's Brooks, and it's going to go off with this right hand, and it's th the ball is thrown behind, and Allen's going to be there. Now, you think, why does Allen bring the ball out to the two? You're going to see why. Look at momentum. He's carrying the ball, and then Brooks falls down, and he falls over top of him and lands in the playing field. Well, I would have been brought out to the 20 had he stayed in the end zone. Pete Sherman with a good second effort. Matt Darby made the stop. You know, Kelly on that drive, six for seven, the only incompletion was the interception. It was a good-looking drive by Buffalo, but stopped right here as Eric Allen came up with his fourth. Remember last Monday night against Dallas, Allen dropped what appeared to be an interception. Eagles had a couple of tracks at what would have been critical interceptions. Second down and four, and penalty marker is down. Problems with the snap. Yeah, that, that, this is moving in a line, so the, the play is stopped. Hey, well, we have time. Let's talk uh, just for a second. I want to say hello to Ball start. Illegal snap on the center. Still second down. Jim Kelly's mother, who had a heart attack, and she's doing fine. Alice, uh, Jim wanted us to tell you hello today. Uh, underwent surgery Friday night and is uh, set to be in stable condition and Jim passes on his best. It's a second down and eight from the four-yard line. Heath Sherman remaining in the backfield. And it is Sherman again. You know something? Bubby Brister does something that's really unusual. He hands off with the wrong hand. I mean, you're going to your right. You hand off with your left hand. Watch what hand he hands off with. I believe it's his right hand. And his left hand, I mean, he's, it's almost like he's in the way. If he puts his left hand in, he can get it back out of there a lot easier. I don't think he has a problem. I know he has a glove on that left hand, but I don't think he has a problem with it. Kind of strange. Beautiful hand, though. <laughs> Bubby will be so pleased. I know, I think he will be. It's a third down and six. And Brister's pass is almost intercepted. It was intended for Bally, and Mickey Washington had a shot at it. Washington starting at left corner for James Williams, who has been benched after struggling a bit. Here's where you cut in and throw into a spot. Watch this. Look at all the white shirts that are out here. He throws to a spot. Bailey is supposed to be running an out. 
the way it looks. And there are four white shirts there. Mickey Washington almost has the interception. And now Jeff Beagles will punt from deep in his end zone. Russell Copeland with the return. Brings inside the 30, hit by Otis Smith. A 35-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Hi, Super Dave Osborne here, getting ready to roll across the country, singing the praises of these great-looking Hager wrinkle-free cotton pants. You know the ones, 100% cotton, wrinkle-free, out of the dryer, no ironing. I'll be covering more than 25,000 miles wearing these beauties. So come out and see me. I just wonder if Hager knows they're paying me by the mile. Uh-oh. Yahoo! Oh! Hager wrinkle-free cottons. 100% cotton, 0% wrinkles. They're still not wrinkled. Six minutes into the second quarter, Buffalo and Philadelphia are scoreless. Both have had their opportunities. Presty missing a 41-yard field goal earlier. Matt Barr missed from 21. I mentioned the troubles of Matt Barr, who missed a, a big one last week against Dallas from 44 yards away. And then Barr heard it from the crowd. Kelly's pass is deflected and almost intercepted again. In that last series, Kelly picked off by, by Eric Allen. This one deflected. Mike Flores almost had to, <laughs> but I don't know if it was deflected or hit off a helmet. Here's Kelly. He's trying to throw the ball out here. Does It goes off of the hands of Simmons, onto the helmet of Fina, and up in the air and off the hands of Mike Flores. Second and 10 from the 26. Davis Hall down. It's a loss. Let him run throw. First round, Brad picked the Eagles. Second pick on the first round out of Colorado. A guy who's been slowed by injuries. There he is, number 94. Renfro made the stop. Loss of two. It'll be a third and 12 at the 28. This game is going in the wrong direction. It's going backwards. Kelly from the shotgun. Again, completes to Brooks. Well, Bill Brooks has been a target here in the first half. That is his fifth catch of the day. Ben Smith made the tackle. Now, Bill Brooks is in the slot. He's just going to come underneath. And you've got man coverage. He just beats the coverage. Ben Smith is there covering him across the middle, but he's behind him, and Kelly puts the ball right where it could be caught. It is a first down for Buffalo at the Philadelphia 16-yard line. Eight minutes left. In the first half, Davis found a hole, and then he is snapped up. William Thomas and Byron Evans combined to make the stop. Byron Evans back from the broken arm suffered October 31st and has been inserted into the lineup. Rich Kotai telling us that he'll see limited duty here today. I think that, that play was supposed to go out to the outside because Seth Joyner, the linebacker, never got over there. Second down play. Davis tries the other side, and he was tripped up inside the 10 yard line. He tripped over his own man. He tripped over Fina, number 70. He tripped over his feet as he went to make the cut inside. Watch number 70 going down the line, and here comes Davis. He just trips over Fina's legs, and he still isn't hit. He can look at him moving on the ground. And he gets the ball because he wasn't touched. Third and one, out of the seven. Davis took the hit, and he is taken down for a loss. Andy Harmon just came across and drilled him. The defensive line fills a hole, but watch for 91. I think he's the guy that hits him right there. Harmon just knocks him back. They had a blitz on. Ben Smith was there. He makes the play. Now they're going for another field goal. Well, did we see this game yesterday? No, this has more excitement than the Jets and the Redskins. Really? Come on, Paul. <laughs> it's been a lot of good action here. No scoring. This is a 29-yard attempt for Christie, who missed earlier from 41. <laughs> and he misses from 29. Are you sure? gets it down and he just shanks it again but paul you have to admit for sheer entertainment value we're all right 
Hi, Super Dave Osborne here, getting ready to roll across the country. NBC is brought to you by Hager Wrinkle-Free Cotton Pants. 100% cotton, 0% wrinkles. By Geo, inviting you to get to know the new Geo Prism. Available only at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. By Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Drive. Bottle beer taste in a can, wouldn't that be great? And by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. The best hamburgers and a whole lot more. Yes, a bitter cold day here in Philadelphia. As Herschel Walker gets the call on first and ten from the 20-yard line. Uh, here's the kick again. And I want to get back to something else a bit now. It was a little high, and, but Christie just gets across and he just shanks it. And Steve Christie with his first miss in the 20 to 29 yard range. He had hit 27 for 27 before missing from 29 yards out. He's missed from 29 and from 41. Matt Barr has missed from 21. That's the kind of day it's been. It's a second and eight from the 22-yard line. And Brewster's pass is picked, uh, no, is uh, deflected. Pass intended for Maurice Johnson, the backup uh, tight end. Paul, you say you have another point. Are we getting stream of consciousness now? No, you, I, what happened was I was watching the first play. This is third down, but on the first play when they ran the ball, Seagulls is down kicking into a net. And the ball went through the net and out onto the 50-yard line. So the officials are, the back judge is sitting there, here comes a ball, and he sees a guy running with a ball. So we had two balls on the field. It's a third and eight at the 22-yard line. Brister off the puck. Sideline pattern connecting with Calvin Williams. And let's see where they mark it. Got to get the ball to the 30-yard line. We know that. And Calvin Williams was close to the 30 when he got hit. They do take the forward progress. The ball is now right on it, but you've got to get just a little bit beyond the 30-yard line. And I don't know. The chain is right there. They're going to measure now. Right, right up here, just beyond the 30-yard line, right in that area, is where he has to get to. And you're going to see here, does Calvin Williams get beyond the 30 when he, when he catches the ball? Right there, he comes down. Does his feet come behind the 30? Now, was he knocked back? Uh, you're in a situation now, really, where you, they got the first down. Well, there's no question what they're going to do. But they got the first down here. But Calvin Williams, you give the forward progress. Now, you can take it back as far as you want to take it back. It doesn't make any difference. And the first catch of the day for Williams, one of the NFL's top possession receivers, 44th reception of the year. Bobby Brister coming off a 27 of 45 for 248-yard performance against Dallas. Those are personal highs by Brister. Penalty marker is thrown. Off guard on the center. Illegal snap. Once again, it's David Alexander called for the illegal snap. Well, you take a look at, so I can show you where the ball is, and I know you, a lot of people don't know where it is. Well, let me get rid of this thing. All right, now he just, when you false move the ball just like that, you can't do that. As soon as he did that, the defense went offside. Lodish was there over the ball, and Hanson on the other side, the defensive end, number 90, both of them offside, but because of the movement of the ball. That's the first, and 15 back at the 25. Walker, oh, power running by Herschel Walker. Uh, Nate Odom's just got a headache. Herschel Walker hit him right in the head with a shoulder pad. Nate Odom comes up the fill, and he's tough. And watch Herschel Walker drop his right shoulder. Now he squares himself up, going through the hole. Nate Odom's gonna come in right here, and goodbye, Nate. That's a three-yard gain, a second and seven at the 33. Six carries, 25 yards for Herschel Walker. 340 remaining. First half, we have no score. Brister throws. And someone got a piece of it. It was intended for Victor Bailey. Cornelius Bennett gets a piece of the ball, knocked the ball down. I said the guy I'm surprised is not in this offense, and I don't know what they're doing to him is uh, Bavaro. 
Bavaro's got great hands. He's having a sensational year. And Mark Bavaro comes off his best game of the season against the Cowboys. Seven catches, two touchdowns. Nothing yet this afternoon for Bavaro. Eagles go with the four receivers for the spur down and seven at the 33. Brister able to float it out to Bailey for a first down. Victor Bailey with his second catch, and it is an Eagle first down. Victor Bailey just gets out in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and makes the play. Here comes Bailey outside. Vicky Washington's on him. One-on-one -on -one coverage, that's what you look for. But the guy who makes this whole play is Herschel Walker. He blocks Henry Jones on a blitz. Herschel Walker right up in the middle, gets the block, opens up the middle, and enables Brister to get the ball off. First down of the 42. I need some help. Nate gets a hold of Herschel Walker at the end of this play. Bootleg by Brister. He gets to the outside. Bruce Smith is in his face. Here's Herschel Walker. Tally comes out and misses the tackle here. Watch Nate Odom. He, he grabs him here, and another six yards later, Herschel Walker has the first down. Herschel Walker last year ran for 1070 yards. He has certainly found new life with this, his fourth NFL team. Walker stopped by Smith. Bruce Smith with the tackle on, on Herschel Walker. Two minutes remaining in this first half. The Bills and the Eagles scoreless. Since your face can't adjust to your this title for the first time since 1971. Need a win over Denver, coupled by a Raiders loss to Seattle. Second and eight. For the 46 as we resume, and just to go sideline, broken up, intended for Calvin Williams. Calvin Williams drops the ball. Mickey Washington is there, but I don't think he gets his hand on the ball. Calvin Williams and Grubby Brister threw that ball very well. It'll be a third and eight at the 46-yard line. Bubby Brister spent seven years with Pittsburgh, four as a starter, but lost his starting job to Neil O'Donnell. He's taken over for the injured Randall Cunningham. Brister went down for a while. Kent O'Brien, who was signed after Green Bay Proctor, got the shot for a brief time. Here's Brister throwing on a turning pattern. And it's broken up. Intended for Mark Bavaro, who is facing double coverage. Well, Marcus Patton gets his arm in and knocks this ball out. Watch the, the play of Marcus Patton, number 53. Here's Bavaro coming downfield. The ball is thrown to him. Look at that. You see that left arm of Patton? That's why the ball was dropped. He got his arm in and knocked it down. Brister's, oh, if only threw it a little further. And the punting unit has checked in. Jeff Beagles back beyond his 40. Russell Copeland is back for Buffalo. And Copeland let it go. It is down by Herschel Walker, who is also involved in special teams activity. 29-yard punt. We'll be right back. fresh beef, cheese, and lots of toppings. Uh, how many? Three big strips of bacon. How many? The new Big Bacon Classic with an order of Biggie fries and a big icy drink. You better come hungry. Who's ready for dessert? Oh, oh no, no thank you. Good. Wendy's, another thing to love about the holidays. 
Nobody's eating anything. I wonder why. Without you, they'd never make it down this mountain. don't show much appreciation, but a job well done still has its rewards. The Kansas City Chiefs, the Denver Broncos, it's Joe Montana versus John Elway. Two future Hall of Famers go head to head in one of the biggest games of the season as two AFC West powers collide. Next on NBC. Leading receiver, leading rusher, and also on the punt team and the kickoff return team, Herschel Walker, number 34. Is he up back? He, he, you know, it's a little unusual to see him on there, but Herschel Walker actually volunteered to be on these teams. And that's nice. And Herschel in the first half offensively, 30 yards receiving, 27 yards rushing, as Kelly rifles one. So the Buffalo Bills with the biggest play of the first half with a minute and 25 remaining. That's a 60-yard pass play. Kelly sees Copeland one-on-one -on, -one on Eric Allen, and Eric Allen loses the ball. And what Copeland does, keeping his eye on the ball, comes back underneath Eric Allen and makes the catch. Illegal contact. 21. Defense is declined. First down. A one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and Kelly is seeing Copeland going down the field. He's watching him all the way, and let's go. Watch Copeland. He'll come out underneath Allen right here. Goes underneath him, makes the play. Miano can't get there, and Copeland almost breaks it, but he gets the ball just about to the 22-yard line. Russell Copeland, fourth-round draft pick, a rookie from Memphis State. Kelly's pass on the screen is picked off out of the question, but a penalty marker is down. The Clyde Simmons able to field that deflection, but a flag has been thrown. The flag is because Kelly hit an offensive lineman with the ball. So it'll be against the Buffalo Bills, but the interception is going to take place, I would believe. I think this ball hit an offensive lineman. Are you ready for this? Illegal touching. Number 67. Offense. It's declined. First down for Seven is Ken Hall. Here's the ball. Bang it hits him in the head. We've had two linemen hitting the head so far. Clyde Simmons makes the interception. Philadelphia has the ball. How about the last four possessions? Kelly's going nuts. The last four possessions of the Bills. You ready for this? A fumble, interception, missed field goal, interception. him a lot. Plus, playing with Montana, they're a pretty good football team. You know, Bobby Brister must really feel good here. Well, the article in today's paper about the first draft choice that Philadelphia's going to make will be a quarterback to back up Randall Cunningham. There is speculation that uh, the Eagles, who supposedly will be hiring a new head of personnel, will be looking on the first round for a quarterback uh, just in case with Randall Cunningham now hit uh, by severe injuries on a couple of occasions but Bobby Brister says that he knows his days are numbered as the starter but he wants to stay with the Eagles next year at least that's what he's saying right now well, they keep three. first and ten from the 25 and Brister is hauled down I don't know if Bobby will be happy as the, uh, the third guy or as an emergency quarterback here's Bruce Smith now Brister's back to pass. Does he get beyond the line of scrimmage? No, he gets through two people and makes the sack. That is the sack that's behind the line of scrimmage. And that's the first of the day. 11 and a half on the season for Bruce Smith, who is among the leaders in the AFC. A timeout has been called with a minute and 15 remaining in this first half. 
and it's a second and 11 from the 24 when we resume. Bills and Eagles are scoreless. It's Marv Levy who broke into the NFL as the Eagles special teams coach back in 1969. This is vintage Marv who is over on the left. That's Irv Cross on the uh, right, then a member of the Eagles staff before going on to television work. Marv got the only spot where he's by himself. He had positioned himself very well, and we asked him who the head coach was then, and he said, I don't know. <laughs> he, he, he couldn't recall a person with Jerry Williams, who was the head coach. <laughs> the man who, who hired Marv. Second down and 11 off the uh, shovel. Vaughn Hebron back on the field. He was stopped by the left defensive end, Phil Hansen. And it is marked as a third and one at the 34. The clock is running under one minute remaining in this first half. Brister's trying to get a play in, and, and they have two timeouts. This is going to take about 25 to 30 seconds to run a play. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. He's determined now. In the backfield, 35 seconds left in the half. It is Sherman finding a hole. First down and more. Take a timeout. And the Eagles do call for time. 14-yard pickup for Sherman, who has run well. This is what happens when you put uh, all your people, you have 11 men up on a line of scrimmage, and once Sherman gets into the secondary, there's really nobody back there. Look at all of the people right up on the off on the defensive line is up inside. The backs are up in there. And then Sherman makes the play. Once he breaks it, he picks up about 14 yards. You know, you're talking about uh, player personnel guys. They're looking for one. There's a pretty good one walking around here in the stadium right now. We saw him earlier today. Bill Polian. I mean, he works for the league office, but, you know, there was an article in the paper, too, about Polian not taking his job because he wants total control of the football end of it, which uh, would be a... A bad idea to give it to him. Bill Polian, formerly of the Buffalo Bills, and is here as an NFL observer. He is working these days for the National Football League, a man who has been the focus of uh, speculation with the expansion clubs uh, looking for uh, executives. And I have a feeling that Bill Polian will end up uh, with a team eventually. but we're down to 19 seconds to go in the half. Run out by the strong safety, Henry Jones. Well, Bubby Brister finding success with a uh, shovel pass. That was one of the longer shovel flips that you'll see. <laughs> Not by design, just heads up play by Bubby Brister. There's the blocking. Cornelius Bennett almost gets there, and he sees Herschel open. He flips it. Now watch what Herschel Walker does. Outruns Jones. He gets himself to the outside to stop the clock. First down at the Buffalo 42. Brister incomplete. Nate Odoms put the hit on. Michael Young, the intended receiver, could not hang on. Now this ball, I mean, this is a rope this time. Brister gets the ball right in there, and Nate Odoms gets his arm up to knock the ball away. So second and 10 at the 42 with 14 seconds remaining of the half. Buffalo and Philadelphia are scoreless. A dump off for Walker. Trying to get out of bounds, and he does. They'd like to get within field goal range. Remember, Matt Barr missed earlier from 21 yards away, and he has had his difficulties this season, but only six seconds remaining. Her Herschel, it doesn't make any difference who Herschel runs over. You know, he ran over Nate Odom. Well, at the end of this one, he also runs over Henry Jones. In the left of the screen, you're going to see 20 come in here. Cornelius Bennett is chasing. Watch Jones. 20. Goodbye. <laughs> Sideline. James Lofton made the catch, but it, it looks like time has run out. So that is the end 
of the first half, and the Eagles are hearing the boos from the crowd. The Bills and the Eagles on no score. Let's go to Jim Lampley in New York. Put on the way. And the return by Russell Copeland. Uh, check that, the return by Brad Lamb. And while we were away, a most unusual sight right before the start of the uh, third quarter as Steve Christie came out early and uh, decided to take some practice kicks. Yeah, but Matt Barr didn't. He's really confident with his kicking. <laughs> Barr with a 21-yard attempt. That uh, hit the goal post. And Christie missed twice. And Thurman Thomas will give it a shot. And there was a penalty on the kickoff return that moves the ball back to about the 23-yard uh, line. The earlier report on Thurman Thomas, who had x-rays on the bruised forearm, was that he would not return, but he is back in there. And there's the pad on his left arm. They start from their 23. could not hold on. Kelly at the end of the first half was able to complete what turned out to be a 60-yard pass play with the rookie Russell Copeland. And Eric Allen almost misplayed this one again. Copeland just doesn't outrun the ball. This ball takes off on him. But watch, Allen stops. Copeland keeps going. It goes off his fingertips. This ball was almost caught. Eric Allen had nothing to do with this. And it's Thomas by Byron Evans. Looked like the ball was not free, but apparently after the play was dead. So Byron Evans starting out at, at middle linebacker. Here's the play to Thurman Thomas. He's going out now. He's got the ball in his right hand. He's got it in the right hand. The ball comes out. Well, that ball you know, looked like it was coming out as he was going down. It's a third and seven from the 26. Kelly just looked to throw it away, chased by Evans. Byron Evans was in his face, and he had to throw the ball away. It was either that or take a sack. And remember, in the National Football League, I guess it's been covered enough this year that uh, you're allowed to throw the ball away. I, I thought that Philadelphia got offside. They let the play go. Offside, 91, defense, still third down. That's the thing, when, when, when the defense is offside and you don't touch anyone, they let the play go. Defense obviously offside, so Kelly had a free play. And with the left defensive tackle, Andy Harmon called for the offside. It's a third and two at the 31. And Thomas has the first down. It's a Buffalo Bills team that has lost three of its last four. They were shut out remember by Pittsburgh handcuffed by Kansas City 23-7 last week the loss to the Raiders and remember they just did get by New England 13-10 in overtime prior to the loss to the Steelers Thomas again so they go right to Thurman Thomas who sat out a good portion of the first half again Byron Evans involved in the tackle it'll be a second down and eight at the 36. It's amazing here, though, that, you know, when the offense is, uh, if you were playing in Buffalo and you were the visiting team and the offense, you would hear the crowd. You don't hear the crowd here. Thomas out of the backfield for that reception and a first down. That's his first catch of the day. We talked about some of the recent scores by Buffalo, and you go back to 1990 and uh, their scoring has certainly gone down over the years. They have struggled, although uh, they did score 24 points last week in the loss to the Raiders. Thurman Thomas tripped up. And Smith West Hopkins combined on the uh, stop. And certainly Buffalo and Philadelphia not uh, helping the, the offensive records here today of this uh, scoreless tie. 
at the start of the third quarter. And they've been down there enough to score. I mean, they were down a couple of times. Allen makes an interception. Second and eight. Kelly completes to Peavy. And it's a first down. Allen on the tackle for BB, his second reception. We've seen this about three different times. The Bills moving down the field and then something happens. Here's the throw to BB. Allen is one on one coverage on BB. That pass is perfect. Andre Reed sitting it out today because of the, the elbow problem and a broken hand, not with the team. So Bill Brooks has been the favorite target thus far of Jim Kelly. Five catches by Brooks. Here's Davis who just came on for Thomas. Pops it up. Greg is thrown. First of all, you're going to have holding against the Buffalo Bills. And it's going to be on Ballard number 75. And I think he was holding Andy Harmon number 91. And I just said a moment ago, we saw this about two or three times so far in this game where the Bills are moving the ball and then turning it over. And here's another one. Recovery made by William Thomas. All right, we'll be back to sort it out in a moment. Okay, classic cars. 63 vets. It feels right by ITT. When it comes to building businesses, at ITT, we're adding more than just our name. By Budweiser, Beachwood Aid for a crisp, clean, classic taste. And by Braun Flex Control, the first electric shaver with a pivoting head that adjusts to every contour of your face. You're going to see the fumble here. Davis, I watch 48 is Wes Hopkins. He's just going to get his hand in right there and knocks the ball out. Thomas picks it up. It comes back. You'll see it right over top of BB. Wes Hopkins makes the play. And there was a penalty called a hold on, on Ballard. So that was declined as the Eagles take over on the fumble recovery. Hugh Sherman gets the call. And a short pickup, Marcus Patton, on the tackle. An advance of three, a second and seven at the 32 with 11 and a half remaining. In this third quarter, the Bills and the Eagles are scoreless. A look at Kenneth Davis, who coughed it up a moment ago. The fourth, fourth turnover by the Buffalo Bills. Philadelphia with one. That on the opening kickoff as Sika Hemmer lost it. But the Bills not able to take advantage off the missed field goal by Christie. Christie completes to Walker. The one thing about Herschel Walker, as big as he is, when he unloads, he unloads on you. You cannot sit and catch him. Rester is trying to throw the ball downfield. No one open, so he hits Herschel Walker. Now watch his shoulders. They hit square. Now when he comes up field, look at Darby. 43 sticks it in there, but he knocks him back out. Bernays Bennett gets the hit, pulls up, smart football. Sixth catch of the day by Walker. He has been the bright spot offensively. And it's a first down for 46. It is broken up intended for Victor Bailey. You know, I, I know you're supposed to throw the ball to one man, and that's Victor Bailey, and he's your prime target. But you don't throw it when there's this many people out there. Watch where, the, where he throws this ball, and look at the white shirts. I mean, Nate Odoms gets his hand in there. If Darby is paying attention to the ball, he could intercept it. Brister, why you threw the ball? Yeah, I agree with you. Why would I throw the ball in there? Anybody, any place but there. Second and 10 at the 46. Four and a half gone by, third quarter. And flags are tossed. This time, Lodish, I don't know if the center moved Alexander again, but Lodish, uh, I think he... Encroachment? Yeah. 73, defense, prior to the snap. Mike Lodi, and you're over the ball, a little anxious, taking a place of Jeff Wright. There's a man that uh, I, I think you talk about unsung heroes in a football on a football team. Jeff Wright is just having a tremendous year. It really goes unnoticed. Right out because of a knee problem, so Mike Lodish making the start. Second and five at the 41. Inside handoff, Sherman. Stopped by Bennett. 
Barrett did it again. He handed the ball off with his right hand. It's, it really looks weird when you see somebody do that. Brister, I mean, it's like a really awkward. He's got he's to almost turn around. Look at this. He does hands it and then backs out of it. Strange. Third and two. I know that left hand works. Third and two at the 38. he wanted he had a one-on-one -on -one situation with Herschel Walker on Marcus Patton and he threw the ball high the ball hits Herschel in the hands I mean you have a chance to, to catch the football but that would have been a first down another punt so Fegels will punt for the fifth time down inside the 10 yard line 28 yard punt 933 to go in the third with no score well Paul with all the uh, complaints about the lack of action in the NFL plus a 0-0 uh, game contributes to it Joe Gibbs gave his suggestions for improvements uh, early in the week Mike Ditka so had a nice list during the Washington Jet game we have your top five and uh, here they are, Paul's top five ways to improve the NFL. No zones inside the 20. All right, we'll, we'll run it down in a moment. Play is ready to resume. It took a lot of thought to him, I guess. From the 11-yard line with nine and a half remaining, third quarter and no score. Kenneth Davis is back. He gets the call. All right, back to Paul's five reasons, five ways to improve the NFL. Twelve guys on defense, yes. On offense, ten on defense. Ten on defense, that's, on defense. Sure. that's fine, all right. And uh, number three, yes, now now we're talking. Improve the deli platters in the press box. Very lacking in that part, I'm telling you right now. I've been in a lot of, a lot of press boxes. Very, very lacking. Second and eight from the 13. And Kelly... Able to complete to the tight end Metzelars. All right, number two, top five ways to improve the NFL. All December games played in Hawaii. And, and you then, and I do those. Right. You got a little confused here with uh, number one. Paul has many suggestions, many areas. Raise the basket 12 feet. Throw that. Yes. I'm big enough. I'm 6'12". You've got to see a guy when he's holding me. And it's three and out for the Bills. And here's Chris Moore back to punt at his five. Second punt of the day for Moore. And he will punt to Vi Sikahema. Big rush. And Sikahema with the fair catch. 45-yard punt. 8.19 remaining in the third. Paul, word of your ingenious top five has already swept the stadium, and here is the reaction from the Buffalo sideline. What yeah, are these guys doing? I can't doing? believe Warren would do that to me, knowing full well that a lot of thought was put into that. Most unique signals that, from the sideline. That side signal... Line. Because that was Bruce DeHaven with him, I think, is for the, the return man. And, and remember, there was nobody really back there. Is don't go near the ball, just get away from it. It's a nice signal, though. I like that. So the Eagles back to the offense from their 37-yard line. Look out, Brewster got it off. Nice catch by Walker, but right at the line of scrimmage. And then driven back by the strong safety, Henry Jones. 
How do you think McHale feels when you see Bruce Smith in a stand-up position, knowing he's coming to the quarterback, and he almost gets there. McHale pushes him. Watch Bruce Smith come back inside, and, and he tackles Brester, but after he throws the ball. The one thing about this defense the Bills just had there, that time, Henry Jones, the strong safety, was up covering Herschel Walker and not the linebacker, Marcus Patton. So they're putting the safety up on Herschel now, knowing that they're just dumping the ball off to him. Second down play, second and about seven out of the 40. Seven and a half to go in the third. And Brewster goes incomplete. Bailey could not hold on. Took the hit from the right corner, Nate Odom. Bailey, I think when, he, when he's bringing the ball down, it pops off his knee. Watch this. Nate Odoms is there. The ball comes down. Look at here. And he, he bangs it off his knee. He can't pull the ball in because Nate Odoms is on him. Now, here's the pressure. They kept both backs in. Cornelius Bennett coming from the outside. Double coverage. And that's Lodish coming in on Brister. Brister is taking a pounding. And so is Kelly. It'll be a third and seven. And Brister looking at four wide receivers. Injured Randall Cunningham looking on from the Eagles sideline. And Brister calls for time. Which is not well received by this crowd. There's cause for some things a mile high as Montana meets Elway in one of the biggest games of the season. Next on NBC. Take a look at number 72, Dave Alexander, the center. He's the guy who's going to turn around and push Brister and tell him to call timeout. Look at him. The Texas Army he pushes him out of there. He says, call timeout. So the center actually is the man that called it. Brister coming off saying, hey, look, at, don't ever push me again, no. <laughs> it's a third and seven at the 40-yard line. The Eagles with the ball at their 40. The Bills and the Eagles are scoreless with seven and a half to go in the third. And Brister pass is caught by Bailey. Nice catch for a first down. He did it in front of Mickey Washington. This is the first time we've seen a wide receiver actually set up into the zone. And with, with Bailey here, he's not running across the middle or running on the out pattern. He just sets up in the zone. Bennett, number 97, cannot get back. And Brister gets his ball high. He's happy. And that's good for 15 per catch of the afternoon for the rookie from Missouri, Victor Bailey. First down at the Buffalo, 45. Keith Sherman is stopped by Bruce Smith. Paul, the last time there was a scoreless game of the National Football League was back on November 7th. 1943. I was at you that were game. a mere child. I was at that game. The New York Giants, Detroit Lions, 0 0. How about Mr. Stats, our crack statistician, Elliot Cowell? How's this for back to back activity? Yesterday was the 3 0 thriller between the Jets and the Redskins, although this one here has more action involved in a 0 0 tie this afternoon. Just a matter of time when he broke it after he caught the ball. The people are very happy with Herschel Walker, their leading rusher, their leading receiver. And Herschel Walker, here he comes, Marcus Patton on him again. Excuse me, I'm sorry, that's Jones on him this time. And now Darby, 43, is going to come up. And Herschel Walker bangs into him and picks up another five. That time they had the safety on Herschel Walker. It's a 25-yard advance. Eighth catch of the day for Walker. 55 for the season. Most receptions by an NFC running back. And Brister throws. Touchdown! Calvin Williams with the touchdown reception. Mark, this is a blown coverage. And I don't know if Darby, who is the safety, was supposed to be there or not. But he didn't get there. Nate Odoms was trying to get some help, and he couldn't get it. Calvin Williams in the end zone for the touchdown. Just great execution. Great throw. Touchdown of the season for Williams. And Matt Barr puts it through. 19-yard touchdown pass play. Six plays, 63 yards in three minutes and two seconds. Nate Odoms on top of the screen. Nate Odoms was playing well off. Calvin 
Robert Williams with the play. I mean, he just saw him wide open, could not believe that there was no one there. I mean, I cannot believe that he went into the, Calvin Williams went into the middle and nobody there. It has to be Darby as the man because, all right, let me show you something here. See, up here, here's Williams here, and here's Nate Odoms. All right, here's Darby. When you take a look at what happens, look who doesn't get there. Here they come downfield. Williams goes right into the slot. There's nobody there. That can't be Nate Odoms' man. I mean, he's there to help out if he goes to the corner, but into the middle of the field, it has to be Darby. Seventh touchdown pass of the season for Bobby Brister. The Eagles with a 7 nothing lead on the Bills. And it was that 25-yard pass play with Brister combining with Walker that set it up. It's been a terrific day for Herschel Walker. flag is down. Brad Lamb, backup wide receiver in his third year out of Anderson in Indiana. On that return, forced out by Lewis Cooper. You know how there's a flag of holding? Derek Oden, number 58, was buried by three guys. They wouldn't let him up. He was about the 33-yard line in the middle of the field, buried under white shirts, and that's where they threw the flag. Holding, 86, Receiving team, join the return. Rob Awal. But Derek Oden, I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> I was looking where the flag went. All I saw were white shirts, and then I saw Derek. Rob Awal, back up tight end for the Bills, called on that penalty. 5 all 9 remaining in the third. And Buffalo back to the offense. Thurman Thomas run out by the left corner, Mark McMillan. Buffalo Bills come into today's game second of the AFC East, a game behind Miami. Miami home tomorrow night for Pittsburgh. And the Bills only a half game in front of the Jets. Thomas trying to make the turn. He's out at the marker, forced out by McMillan. McMillan may be small, but he still he delivers a pretty good blow out there on the corner. Only five foot seven, 160 pounds. That's Mark McMillan. Started most of the season. Tenth round draft pick last year out of, out of Alabama. That's 160 pounds in uniform with helmet. Spotted just a yard shy of a first down. It's a third and one. Buffalo from its 27. Play action. And Kelly throws to Metzelars. Metzelars with the first down reception. Broke down by Eric Allen, and that is good for 29 yards. They got the exact matchup they wanted. They have Pete Metzelars on Allen. And Pete Metzelaar's the bigger man. Watch the pass by Kelly over the shoulder of Metzelaar. Allen has no chance at the ball. Metzelaar makes the catch. The leading receiver of the Buffalo Bills. First down inside the 45. And that a career-high 50th reception for Metzelaar. His first catch of the day. Kelly off the puck. Kelly going deep. Pass intended for Don Beebe, covered by Mark McMillan. And 50 catches by Pete Metzelars represents the most by a Buffalo Bills tight end in the history of the franchise. And he's a terrific blocker. They feel he's one of the best blockers in the entire National Football League. It's a second and 10 at the 44. Davis accelerates. William Thomas made the stop. Sets up a third and five at the 39 with 320 remaining in this third quarter. Ken Davis seeing quite a bit of activity this afternoon because 
Thurman Thomas was sidelined for a good portion of the first half. Entering his forearm. Kelly eluding the rush and then completing to Metzelon. What a play start. by Jim Kelly, but he comes up hotly. That's a 14-yard pass play, and, and Kelly is hurt. You know, there's no, really, there's no in the grasp anymore. And Kelly just, you talk about staying with it and fighting Pete Metzelars. Frank Reich up throwing, but Kelly tried to walk off, and he hurt his ankle again. Here's Kelly. Now watch this. He goes underneath the pressure, and then the guys are on him. Look at here. And he still gets the ball off with enough loft on it for Metzelars. Here comes Kelly. Harmon, number 91, has got him by the leg, turning his leg. Kelly gets the ball off. They twisted his ankle when he get up. When he gets up, that's when he really realizes it. But to get that ball off and get it to Metzelars, his 51st catch. And there's Kelly down. Jim Kelly hurt his shoulder in the first half. A bruised right shoulder was able to hang in. He's 16 for 24, as you see. 204 yards. So the one thing about Metzelars, you know, we asked Kelly, you know, here's Metzelars last night is your leading receiver. And I said, by design, and Kelly said, not really. But here's a guy that gets open. Watch Metzelars keep working. Now, he, he sees Kelly back there struggling. Now, watch him work to get open. He just keeps moving along the line, giving him a target to throw to, and he goes up in the air, makes the catch, and gets the first down. That's outstanding play. The big concern, though, Jim Kelly. Four weeks ago in that loss to Pittsburgh, Kelly suffered a, a bruised shoulder, hurt the shoulder earlier in the day, and uh, now hobbling his way to the sideline. Shoulder, look at he's got a brace on his right knee. We're seeing two, probably two of the toughest quarterbacks that are playing in the game today with Bobby Brister and Jim Kelly. And Frank Wright has checked in. Frank Wright, very successful backup over the years to Jim Kelly. Thus far this year, only 9 of 15, 81 yards. He's taken over a Buffalo team that has a first down at the Philadelphia 25, and penalty markers are thrown. You saw the movement. Metzelars moves. They made a great play. Now he moved. The one thing about Reich that has been a problem. Uh, and Ball start. 88. Offense. He the one thing about play. Reich, though, is when, he, is, when he knows he's going to start and he gets all the repetitions during the week, he seems to be more successful. When he has to come in off the bench, he is not as effective uh, as at quarterback as when he starts. And he knows he's going to start. Because, obviously, during the course of the week, the starter gets 70 to 80 percent of the reps. Well, his record as a starter bears it out. Six up and two down as a starter, including two wins in the playoffs. It's a first and 15. Thomas off the handoff with a short pickup. Herman Thomas stopped by William Thomas. Been a very strong game for the outside linebacker, William Thomas. This team, the Philadelphia Eagles, their pursuit to the ball is incredible. I mean, if you take a look at that last play with Thurman Thomas, there were six guys actually making the tackle. And the word on Jim Kelly, he sprained his ankle. He is getting retaped, and the Bills expect that he will return. Second and 13, and right brought down again. It is number 51, William Thomas. Talk about Pete Metzelars having a record-breaking day. William Thomas is having a record-breaking day. <laughs> this is probably the best game he's ever played. And he is just outstanding. He comes from the outside. Not enough people to block. Actually, nobody even touches him. There's not enough people in the backfield to block. Thurman Thomas was coming out on a route. You'll see him come out to the left. Now, look on the other side. There's nobody to block. When Metzelars releases, Thomas releases, he's there. The Eagles come up with their second sack for the game. Thomas is three and a half now for the season. It's a third and 18, and Wright finds an open. Well, he thought he had an open man. It's broken up. McMillan almost picked it off. The pass intended for B.B. He had B.B. wide open. He had B.B. beyond McMillan, 
and in front of the safety man. But when he threw the ball, he threw the ball short. And McMillan gets back. Watch McMillan cover. Now, see, he releases him to the safety. The safety is back there. It's in a perfect position, but McMillan gets there. Wes Hopkins is the safety coming over. BB sets up right in the right spot. Didn't have enough on the ball. And Steve Christie will try from 51 yards away. Christie having a difficult day. Line drives it. This one is not good. Three for three to the left. Every kick he's made is gone. He took it left. Oh for three. Two from long range. Teammates trying to provide confidence for Christie. Who earlier this season hit from 59 yards out. And, you know, we saw him out there at halftime. He got out a little early with the holder and the center. And here it is. Let's just see what happens. That's Frank Reich holding. The ball is perfect. He's just hooking everything. I mean, that didn't even have a chance. What? This? Well, it looks like it's close there, but it's not. It really wasn't. Here is the hole. The strings are downfield where they're supposed to be. Everything is fine. He doesn't slip. He just hooks it. Three for three. Same spot. So the Eagles take over. 54 seconds remaining third quarter. Philadelphia seven. Bucket all. Nothing. Eaton Sherman. Stopped by Bruce Smith. What a play by Daryl Talley, though. T Kelly's up again. You're not going to keep him out of there. They taped him up. He's ready to go. Darrell Talley at that time just came in and took on Herschel Walker, stood him straight up. Sherman, he Sherman had no place to run, and Bruce Smith made the play. What has happened to Hebron? We have not seen him in the second half. I saw him briefly. I, I have a feeling that Rich uh, Kotai was not thrilled with those cutbacks. But, uh, he, was, he was losing yardage. Walker again. Curricular activity following the catch. Nine catches, 103 yards for Herschel. That was Bavaro, a little extra step downfield with Goganius, number 50. And now time has run out in this third quarter. Eagles with a 7 0 lead over the Bills. Station. McGuire from Veterans Stadium, Philadelphia, on to the fourth quarter on a very cold day here in Philadelphia. The Eagles with a 7 0 lead on Buffalo. It's a third down and one. Bristol off the play action has Walker again. And it's an Eagle first down. 11 catch for Herschel Walker. I love the play calling on third down and short yardage. The, the, the Bills did it through the Metzelars. This time, Bobby Brister and the Philadelphia Eagles, they do the same thing. A little play action. Herschel out into the flat. Linebacker Goganius is out there with him, but Herschel already has the first down. Make that his 10th catch, as you saw. Herschel Walker. problems it was Marcus Patton on the recovery yeah but it was Cornelius Bennett on the hit he gets by Anton Davis watch Cornelius Bennett he throws Davis away and then reaches in and knocks the ball away from Herschel Walker again the handoff with the wrong hand as far as I'm concerned the handoff is there but Cornelius Bennett with the hit Anton Davis just does not make the block and Cornelius Bennett makes the hit Marcus Patton gets the fumble do it again. Do hear a lot. So the Buffalo Bills have taken over. Jim Kelly is back at quarterback. And Kelly with protection getting the long look. Throwing it. It's broken up. McMillan getting a piece of it. It was intended for BB. BB was saying he's holding the back of my shirt. If the flag isn't there, you're not going to get it. Kelly gets another shot. Kelly has a lot of time to throw. There's Parker out in front. Now Kelly sits and sits and waits, and then there's the shot there. And then at the end, where's the hand? Is the hand on his back? 
There's officials all the way around. I wouldn't call that pass interference. I thought it was a good play. Second and ten. Kelly completing Ace Lip, and again, I mean, he's just taking shot after shot. Flores that time, number 95, again on the hit. And that the sixth catch of the day for Bill Brooks. There goes Kelly, throws, and he's hit, and they, and, and they grab his leg again. I mean, he's just getting smacked, but they're also grabbing on, and they're twisting his ankle. You want to find out how tough he is? Just watch it. It's the third and four at the 43. Minute and a half gone by in the fourth. Almost intercepted by William Thomas. What a game he has played. If there's such a thing as a player of the game, they don't have one, I guess, each week. But I know his teammates will give it to him on defense. It's got to be William Thomas. Times this perfectly. The pass by Kelly Thomas is right there. He jumps up and, and gets both hands on it. So the Buffalo Bills, following that fumble recovery, not able to take advantage. Chris Moore will punt from his 42-yard line. Sikahama with the fair catch. 13-22 remaining in the fourth. So you think driving an Oldsmobile 88 is like sitting in your living room? Well, we've got a photo of your living room here. Love the couch. Now take a look at the 88 LSS. Cooler seats, much better sound system. Plus, it handles better than your living room, not to mention many cars. So if you're going to sit down, at least do it someplace good. It's your money. Do you dream in color? In bottomless blues and screaming yellows? In sounds that shake you to the bottom of your heart? In images clear as crystal, brilliant as ice? In faraway worlds, as close as your fingertips. These are what dreams and Sony Trinitron televisions are made of. Make one come true for you. It's your life. Isn't it worth a Sony? My dander's really bad. The itch drives me crazy. I'll try anything. The Denerex side feels different. It has a clean, tingling feeling. Nothing with head and shoulders. Both Denerex and head and shoulders have effective dandruff medicine. But Denerex goes a step further with something extra that tingles to give your scalp a fresh, invigorating feeling. That tingle is why I started using Denerex. Try Denerex with conditioners, the serious dandruff shampoo. No more flakes, no more itch. My dandruff's history. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Oldsmobile. By Denerex with conditioners, the serious dandruff shampoo. By the Chic ST Razor, we're changing the face of shaving. And by Coca-Cola Classic, always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. A look at the, the two quarterbacks, Jim Kelly, 17 of 27, 210 yards. Bobby Brester, 19 for 32, 190. And the only score, the 19-yard touchdown pass to a wide-open Calvin Williams. Back to the ground for Herschel Walker. Right back to the same play he fumbled on. That time, Bill Hansen makes the tackle. There's some numbers for you, huh? The rushing department not doing too well, 27 yards. But on the pass receiving department, uh, do I figure that right? Ten, a little over 10 a catch? Pretty good, you know. Oh, 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 I'm a Citadel graduate. Well, I actually did graduate. He's hurt. I mean, he's limping. Cornelius Bennett drilled him. It'll be a third and ten at the 13-yard line. This has not been a good day for quarterbacks, folks. First of all, it's very cold. And then watch 97, Cornelius Bennett. He doesn't quit. Brister throws. Go Hanson's there. He hits him low. Cornelius Bennett hits him high. Brister is limping. Still limping, coming out of Lippin coming out of the huddle. Ken O'Brien throwing on the sideline. Ken O'Brien, the backup quarterback. And Buster completes to the tight end. Mark Bavaro for a first down. First catch of the day for Bavaro. Stopped by Henry Jones. And that 
yards in advance of 18. This offensive line blocks so well because the whole field opens up for Brister. You see him looking right there. There's a lane for him to throw the ball to Brevaro. The offensive line blocks so well, and they kept everybody out of the middle. Look at this middle. See, now he can see the whole lane. He sees Brevaro coming open, hits him. First down. Excellent. It's a first down at the 32 with three minutes gone by in the fourth. Tenant receiver Victor Valley covered by Mickey Washington. This is a Philadelphia Eagle team that at one point had a record of four and all with Randall Cunningham at the controls and Cunningham was injured back in game four. Brister came on and the Eagles were able to hang out and beat the Jets. However, they have lost seven of their last eight with the combination of Bubby Brister and Ken O'Brien. Second down and 10 at the 32. That's Williams in motion. It's the second back coming through. He's Sherman. I think the interesting thing is Rich Kotite yesterday talking to us. He said, you know, in training camp, I looked at this team and I said, and I told everybody, we're going to be a very good football team after losing all those guys that they lost. And they said, everybody looked at me like I was nuts. Then we come out, we win the first four with Randall Cunningham, and we are doing very well. We're doing some smart things. And then... The injuries came, and I mean, they came in bunches. And devastating injuries. We're not talking about a hamstring pull. We're talking broken legs. And, uh, Is that he said he's never out. seen anything like that in all of his years. It's a third down and four at the 38. looking out to the outside. He's going to throw this ball, and look at Nate Odom. He gets caught inside, going for the ball. Bailey makes the catch, picks up the first down, or inside the 40. He's pointing over there saying, I like your call. Look at that wink. I like your call. Nice call. I wonder who he's winking at. the offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Delay a game. Often. Go first down. You celebrate at the end of the game. You don't get all carried away. You got to get the plays up. You only have 40 seconds. Then you don't pay attention to the clock going down. You can take a timeout. That sure wing cost him five yards. <laughs> Showed you uh, <laughs> Zeke on the sideline. He's taking some heat with the offense struggling as of late. It's a first and 15 at the 43. And Brister's pass is broken up. Broken up by Darrell Talley. A pass intended for Calvin Williams. You know, that is a terrific drop by Darrell Talley. He got back about 15 yards. He gets his hand up. Look at Talley. He's playing the ball. Not playing the man. He's in his zone. If he would have been another, he knows if I'd have only been another yard deeper, I'd have been able to get two hands on it. But you did knock the ball down. Outstanding play. Second and 15. Brister made a 360. Pops it to Sherman. And he fumbles. Recovered by the Bills. Another turnover. Cornelius Bennett and Bobby Brister are sitting back here about the 40-yard line. The screen was set up very nicely. Blocking out front. Lester Holmes is out there blocking. And then he's Sherman. That's his, is that his second fumble? Here it is. Holmes is out there blocking. Hansen comes in. And Mickey Washington on the recovery. You want to know about Michael Irvin? Well, uh, I'll tell you about Michael Irvin. Man has no fear. Uh, I remember this one play when, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was running a deep slant. 
against the grain, against the swarming secondary. Oh, yeah. Does Michael hear the footsteps? Does Michael fear the footsteps? No. Michael locks in. Michael holds on. I, I hear the footsteps. You, you hear the footsteps? So, you're buying a new car. Well, before you spend all that money, why not make a free call? 1-800-LSS-WINS. When you do, we'll send you a free video showing how well the Oldsmobile 88 LSS luxury sedan stacks up against cars costing thousands more. It's your money. But fortunately, it's also a free call. Before you thought to dream... Back at quarterback and gives to Kenneth Davis. Nice hole up the middle for Davis. Wins the Seattle, their free safety on the stop. And uh, Jim Kelly, with a sprained ankle after bruising his shoulder once again, is now said to be questionable as in terms of making his return. Buffalo down by the score of 7 nothing, And right completes to Brooks. William Thomas on the stop. Board. Coming up on nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, Philadelphia with a 7-0 lead on, on Buffalo. The Bills have lost their last two straight on the road. Losses at Kansas City and at Pittsburgh, both bad losses. And a defeat here today would drop the record to 8-5 and, and would put them in a tie with the Jets. In a game and a half behind Miami, Miami playing tonight. Deep right, throwing deep. Intended for BB. Well, that time, Wright just went back and threw the ball as far as he could throw it. In the AFC East, Miami at 9-3. and three. They're home for Pittsburgh tonight. Buffalo coming into today 8-4. and four. The Jets with that 3-0 win over Washington yesterday, 8-5. And, and that's what Buffalo has left all division opponents next week at Miami, then the Bills home for the Jets. They close at Indianapolis on January the 2nd. Right off the wall. Bill Brooks with the reception for the first down. You see, right that time, as he was running with the football, he saw Bill Brooks, and he just told him to settle down. He'll move his arm. Reich rolls out of this pocket now. The blitz is on up in the middle. Evans and the guys are coming. Now watch me tell him, just sit down right there. He moved his arm, stop, let everybody run by you. He throws it to him for a first down. Eighth catch of the day for Brooks, and a first down at the Eagle 43. Lots of movement. Well, no slide because he can go. He didn't touch anybody. Now they're going to get the. They're down. They're looking for a delay of game, but they, they call the timeout. What happened was that Mike Flores never. Is it was it Flores? No, Simmons. Simmons. Clyde Simmons goes across, doesn't touch anybody. They come back. He can do that as long as the ball is snapped and as long as he doesn't touch anybody. Now the Bills are standing around saying, "Wait a minute. Why don't you call him? Throw a flag." And as that, the play clock was going down, they had to call a timeout because they were down to one second. And now both Philadelphia and Buffalo have two timeouts remaining. And what they will do is they will give them a warning. Because it can draw the offense off. All right. Clyde said, watch him come across. Now, he doesn't touch anybody. He's pointing. Nobody's, he doesn't touch anybody. They're all looking around. Now, Rice's looking for a flag. But as long as you don't touch anybody, you can get back outside. He sees the play clock going down, Reich does, and he calls timeout. Now they'll warn him. Don't intimidate the offense. Clyde Simmons last year led the NFL in sacks with 19, made the Pro Bowl the last two years. Uh, this year, a different story. Only three sacks, but he's playing hurt. He's playing hurt, and, and Reggie White isn't here. That can, it'll help a little bit, too. First down at the 43 as we resume. Just under eight minutes left. In the fourth quarter, the Eagles seven. The Bills nothing. He's got four seconds to get this ball off. And White unleashes the intended receiver. 
receiver was BB, well covered by McMillan. You know, you could just you could see that Reich is rusty and he's looking at things because again he doesn't get all the work. Reich is a very, very smart player and he works as hard as anyone else on this football team does. But the problem is when you don't have that same repetition week, you know, every day during the week like Kelly has, and then you come into a game and you're absolutely frozen. I mean it is cold down there and they expected to do something that's hard to do. Second and ten, penalty flag is thrown. Davis got the call. Offside, William Thomas. Reich is also a very structured quarterback. Always seems to make the right decisions. That's the referee, Johnny Greer, indicating the call on the Eagles. Holding. Holding. Correction. Offside. He want, he want, second down. Johnny's getting a little cold. Johnny wanted he, he, was gonna, he put his arms out like I'm holding my hips to tell you he was offside. That's what he meant. All right, here it comes. Thomas, he's offside. No question about it. That's the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, Buck Carson. Second down and five. Right in trouble. And down he goes. Hold down by Andy Harmon. His first today, he has seven and a half for the season. He's going to fake the Kenneth Davis like this, and he's going to run out on the bootleg except for one thing. Harmon didn't go for it. Watch Harmon. The whole offensive line comes right. Harmon goes back to his right, which is the left of the offense, and sacks right because there was absolutely nobody there. Jim Kelly's going, look out, look out. You've got to block somebody. The Eagles come up with their third sack of the game. It's a third down. to the sideline but way short of the first down hooking up with Brooks who was tied up by Ben Smith. I think they're in a situation where the Bills have to go for it. I mean this this is, is really is a must game for this team. They've lost three out of their last four. They are inside the 40 yard line. They're about the 30 uh, almost the 37. They've got to get the ball to the almost to the 33. So they and they have to go for it. They are going for it. It's a fourth down, about five. That's time remaining in the fourth quarter. They're coming. White completes for the first down, combining with Davis. Run up by Joyner, and a flag is thrown. Makes this play. The throw by Reich is right on target, but the guy that makes this play is Kenneth Davis because he sells the fact to Joyner that he is not going to receive the ball. He's looking, but he doesn't have his arms up until the last second. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. 38 defense. That'll put 15 more on Arisciano, but Davis is the guy that sells this play. When he comes out of the backfield, Wright's going to throw it to him. Seth Jordan is covering. And look at Davis. Just at the last second, he puts his hands up. Jordan never has a chance to turn. And here comes the hit. Oh, and that, that is really dumb. You don't do things like that. Davis, get away from him because you'll get a flag. But the end, I mean, the guy's out of bounds. It's, it just really is uncalled for. Meanwhile, Kenneth Davis has done a nice job in coming on for Thurman Thomas, who has been injury hit. This afternoon, Davis, 13 carries, 60 yards. He's also caught four passes. First down of the 13, Buffalo trailing 7 nothing. as we come up on six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And again, it's Davis, the lone defense. Right completes to Brooks. Run out by Allen. Eric Allen on the coverage of Bill Brooks, who has come up with his 10th reception of the game. Now, the Bills are going to go to double tight end with uh, Keith McKellar coming into the game, number 84. Bill Brooks, an ideal possession receiver, signed on plan B from the Indianapolis Colts. He has emerged today. He has 52 catches now for the season. It's a second down and four. For the five. I 
can tell you if they want on fourth down before, when they're down here, this is all four down territory. They don't need three. They want seven. Bills are looking at a third and two at the five-yard line. Buffalo Bills came in hard hit by injury. The injury is continuing today. Frank Wright has taken over for Jim Kelly. Kenneth Davis has come on for Thurman Thomas. Right throwing, it is broken up. Simmons gets his hand up, but Frank Reich was trying to get the ball with Keith McKellar. They're going to take a timeout here, and this will be their second one. But McKellar is going to be open, and Clyde Simmons knocks the ball down. To the left of the screen, the throw is out there. Look at McKellar. There is absolutely nobody there. And a timeout is called. We'll be right back. Lure Jensen, they make lures for fishing. It's a family company that's been manufactured. Here's McKellar. Now, there's going to be a blitz on the outside here. This man is Thomas. He should have moved over to cover McKellar. But when Keller goes out here, there's just no one to cover him. He's wide open. Simmons and Kelly. Jim Kelly. You think he didn't know it? Look at Kelly. It's there. It was there. There. So it has come down to a fourth down and two at the five. Buffalo trailing Philadelphia 7 up and five. They have the first down. Yes, they do. It is spotted inside the three-yard line. It is a first down for the Bills. Now they bring in their biggest offensive lineman, number 66, Jerry Crafts, 6'6", 333, Second-year player from Louisville, Crafts. Wes Hopkins putting the hit on Carwell Gardner. Carwell Gardner making it back today from the pulled hamstring injury, giving the uh, Buffalo Bills a legitimate pullback. They thought they had one last week. Nate Turner was all set to start. But he was injured during the course of the opening kickoff. It's a second down and two at the two. And right throws touchdown. A wide open Pete Metzelaz with his third touchdown of the season. I mean, first of all, you've got to know he's the number one receiver on this team, the Buffalo Bills, and nobody covers him. When he goes out, Take a look at this play action. He goes out, and there's absolutely nobody there. Sits down, great catch. And now here is the try for the extra point by Steve Christie, who has had his difficulties in the field goal kicking department. But he has tied the game at seven with 3.44 remaining in the four. Recently, Oldsmobile pitted its 88 L. last scoring drive of 71 yards, six minutes, and now with a cut, uh, 3.44 remaining in the fourth quarter. Phil Nettie has time to get the field goal range, but uh, with the uh, bar kicking, I think they'd rather have a touchdown to worry about getting in field goal range. Kenneth Davis has been an important factor coming on for Thurman Thomas, converting two fourth downs in that drive, fourth and five, and then a fourth and two. There's Sukahama on the return across the 20 and coughs it up again. Buffalo has recovered by Sukahama, as you mentioned earlier, so dependable over the years, fumbled the opening kickoff and just fumbled again, and it will be Buffalo ball. This is a product of trying to do something more than you have to do. He's trying to gain an extra half yard, and you don't have to. It's cold, take the hit, go down. 
it, 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 it comes after struggling. Here comes Bicek ahead. He's going to run to the left of the screen. And when he gets hit right there by Harvey, when he's hit, now watch, he tries to keep more and more, and then Carwell Gardner goes in and just strips the ball out. Let's go down. Trying to get a little bit more. Here's a close-up of it. Now see, he stops right here. Now he's trying to struggle to get more. He pulls the ball away from his body. Carwell Gardner grabs the ball out. Carwell. I did it. Carwell making his return today, and uh, yes, making it clear that he did come up with the football. By Sikahama over the years, one of the outstanding kick and return men in the NFL. Could be he's trying to do a little bit too much. The Eagles were, were stifled last week by, by Dallas in the kick return game, but Sikahama with two fumbles, four turnovers apiece, and here's Buffalo just moments ago tying the game at seven with 3.32 to go in this fourth quarter with a terrific opportunity. They take over at the Philadelphia 22-yard line. Certainly the weather has been a factor. It's 30 degrees, very cold here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. They line up with the two backs, Gardner in front of Davis. Davis led by Gardner. And then hit down at the 16 by Byron Evans and Mike Flores. You know, we're talking about Carwell Gardner. The, the one thing we were talking to Marv Levy yesterday, and he said, you know, uh, you're going to go with a fullback and a halfback. He said, yeah. He said, but I can guarantee you one thing that Carwell will not be on the kickoff team, either receiving or kicking off. In the beginning of this to start the football game. Any other time you can put them on. <laughs> because we're not gonna we're not gonna screw up our offense again. Because last week they had Nate Turner on who practiced all week with two backs and he gets hurt on the opening kickoff. So it'll be a second down and three at the 15. 245 remaining in the fall. Davis with a short pickup. That touchdown pass thrown by Frank Wright, the first touchdown that he has thrown since he took over for Jim Kelly and directed the stirring comeback over Houston in the wild card playoff game last season. Frank Wright completing to Pete Metzelars, and that tied the game at seven. Timeout has been called, so both the Bills and the Eagles are down to one timeout remaining with 231 to go in the fourth. Well, tonight, NBC with a blockbuster twin bill coming up first at 7 at 6 Central Time. You can blast your way into the future with George Jensen and his family on the network premiere of the Jensen's. And then NBC presents E.T., certainly one of the most beloved movies of all time from Steven Spielberg, The Jetsons and E.T. tonight at 7. 6 Central, very, uh, very snappy uh, Jetsons theme song for <laughs> Barb, you know, the problem is here, you, you've got... All right, cut the music. All right, All right that's sorry, it. Now, the music out. I apologize on behalf of Don't the Don't ever staff. do that again. Frank Reich has got a problem. See that, that play clock going in, the Bills are going into the end zone. That's not working. The play clock on the other end of the field is now out also. But that was on. So Reich is trying to run the clock down. Well, after a timeout, it really doesn't make any difference. But when you're trying to run the clock down and get as much off the clock, and you're looking at the play clock, and you can't see it, you can't turn all the way around and look at the other one. Now they have them both out. All right, first down play. And Davis is tripped up by a combination of Hager and Hopkins. And a timeout is taken by the Eagles. It's a fourth and four at the 16. And remember, Steve Christie, 0 for 3. Missed from 41, from 29, and, and from 51. Let me correct myself. Frank Wright did throw two touchdowns in the divisional playoff against Pittsburgh. So it's the first touchdown he's thrown since the playoffs of last season. He led the comeback against Houston in the wild card and then did face the Steelers. He's taken over here for Jim Kelly. It's been a rough day physically uh, for Kelly. Hurt his shoulder, hurt his ankle. It's the ankle that has kept him out of action. Herman Thomas also hurt his forearm. He did try to come back 
and uh, then was taken out. Kenneth Davis has played a good portion of the second half and has done a nice job. Meanwhile, Paul, Steve Christie thinking about this one, which will come from 34 yards away. With the 0 for 3 today, he's 14 for 22 for the season. Steve Christie feels very good about that one. And the whole team came out on the field to talk to him to, to congratulate him. This ball has popped right straight up the middle. I mean, couldn't hit it any better. He knew it about time. Bicek and Hammond's got to be sick. That's two. The first one, the opening kickoff, he fumbled. Nothing came of it. And this one could cost him the football game. And Cornelius Bennett saying, yeah, but you got to understand something, Cornelius. There's two minutes and 18 seconds to go in this ball game. Eagles do not have any timeouts remaining, though. Bills have one left. Steve Christie, a guy who certainly has upgraded the Bills' place kicking. Uh, this day did not start in that matter. Missed his first three, but uh, hits one right here from 35. Christie, a guy who spent two years with Tampa Bay, signed on Plan B with Buffalo. He has the long range, too. Hit that 59-yarder back in in game three had two long shots today not able to connect but a moment ago the 35 yard field goal for a 10-7 lead for buffalo and it is sakahema who is back deep once again along with herschel walker and if i'm going to kick the ball somebody i'll kick it to that guy 22 by sakahema he wants to give it back to you for some reason or other. Well, you know, at age 31, he is the second oldest full-time return man in the league next to Mel Gray of Detroit, who is the team at age 32. And it is Sakahama. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. Sakahama with a burst, able to hold on, and a flag has been thrown. They're going to have one of those illegal blocks again in the back. Number 54 of the receiving team. Brett Hager, legal block. I mean, <laughs> everything is going wrong. The wheels fell off a long time. Well, the wheels fell off a long time ago in this ball game, but this is uh, against this defense, and now they're going to just lay back and come on up. They know that you know, no timeouts except for the two-minute warning, and that'll be probably after this play. Eagles starting from their 14-yard line. Brister in trouble, able to get it off to Walker. Now, was that ball knocked out of his hands, or did he flip it to Walker? It looked like he flipped it over his shoulder to him. Uh, I guarantee you they're not going to put this play in. Uh, <laughs> but Brister is being tackled. Herschel Walker is out here helping out on Bruce Smith. Now, what, Cornelius Bennett is here. Look at the Whoa. little flip out to the outside. There's Herschel's got it. That's a forward pass. Takes it to two minutes. to shave than the three leading disposables. And men say it delivers a safer shave than the three leading disposables. So, for a better overall shave than the three leading disposables, pick the ST from Schick. We're changing the face of shaving. 
portable, portable Motorola pager. In mile high, back in October of 92, last season, week five, John Elway threw two touchdown passes. The final two minutes, he put in that 12-yard completion of Vance Johnson with 38 seconds to go, and the Broncos won 20 to 19. Kansas City at Denver will be seen by most of the country. Some of you will see the Seahawks battle the Raiders. Off the movement, a, a series of penalty uh, flags are thrown. Chiefs can clinch the AFC West title for the first time since 71. They need a win over Denver, coupled by a Raiders loss to Seattle. We're down to two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter here. Defense. The offside against Still Buffalo. second down. They just said they're going to pin their ears back and go because they know they got to throw, but they can't go a little bit too soon. It's a second and three at the 21. The Bills have come from behind. They lead the Eagles 10-7. And Brister completes for the first down to Victor Bailey. And now Philadelphia in its version of the hurry up. Philadelphia has used all its timeouts. And a 140 remaining in the fourth. Oh, oh hard hit on Herschel Walker. Well, Herschel Walker, he does two things. First of all, he gives up and he helps out on the block with McHale on Bruce Smith. Then he releases, and once he releases, then Cornelius Bennett just drills it. On the outside, Herschel Walker coming up. Here's the ball. Here's Bennett. There goes Herschel. Corey Beck, he has a swizzle stick. He didn't use it for a long time because he, he chipped the tooth, and that's why he wasn't using it. Second and ten at the 33. First the two on the run. Nice catch by Bailey. Well, the Eagles very much alive, trying at least to get into position for a game-tying field goal. That's good for 15 yards. Smith breaks through, but he has three people on him, and, and, and Bobby Brister just sees the play, looks downfield, Victor Bailey coming back, and that's what you have to do. When you see your quarterback in trouble, come back, give him a target. They did. They get the first down and out of bounds to stop the clock. Six catches, 81 yards for Bailey. First down from the 48. And that is incomplete, intended for Lofton. covered by Washington. That's how it looked like Brister was trying to throw the ball away, but he never got it far enough out there. And it, he just kind of flicked the ball. And I mean, he's been under an awful lot of pressure. He's going to throw and duck. That's the old throw and get out of the way. Go Hanson, number 90 in his face. Brister is looking to the side. They sent it to play. And he, he kind of shrugged it off like, are you out of your mind? Brister doing a lot of throwing, 43 passes thrown this week, 45 last week. That's number 44, good for a first down with Calvin Williams. they got to get up on the ball, and, and these guys are kind of walking. This is, everybody's got to get back and get set. Brister just, see, here's what he said. When, when you have an incomplete pass, you should try to call at least two plays. It's a first down at the Buffalo 39, and Brister again completes inside the 30 to Bailey. Walk is running. Eagles do not have any timeouts remaining. They're down to 50 seconds. 13 yard pickup. Well, they thought, they thought, Daryl Talley thought he got a fumble, and Bailey, when he hit the ground, he fumbled the ball. Obviously, the official said no, that he was down. And now the clock is stopped. You know, here's the, here's the situation, and which, which I like what Brister did on, on this drive. He threw two completed passes in the middle of the field because he had a minute and some seconds. When you're playing defense, you get into prevent or zone defenses at the end of the game, Mark, you kind of give the middle because you want him to throw in the middle. So what Brister did said, okay, if you're going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. Now, they still have 36 seconds left to go. They got it's second down. They still have a chance to throw one more in the middle get up, throw the ball down, and get the field goal to tie the game and put it into overtime. Or go down the middle for the touchdown. But the middle will be open. It's a second and 10 at the 27. And 
the flags are thrown with the movement being indicated against the Eagles. Far to the snap. Still second down. See, the thing is, Lester Holmes comes out of his stance is what happens on that side. And when he does that, even though Phil Hansen's across, Phil Hansen comes across on the left side of the screen. He comes across. That's because Holmes comes out of his stance. That bar has been limbering up. He missed earlier from 21 yards away. 36 seconds to go in the fourth. Wilson to the sideline. It is incomplete. He is out of bounds. Michael Young with the catch, but he was out of bounds, and we're down to 30 seconds left in the fourth. I still think that Brister has enough time. He's trying to get this ball to the outside. He just young doesn't get anything down. But I still think there's time to really throw. We've got a nature player on the other side where the Buffalo Bill is down. It's like one of the officials is uh, also shaken up. Perhaps one of the uh, the sideline people. Just wipe that there's young he gets rolled underneath just cut his feet out from whatever his head hit the ground i still think that brister has time marv to throw a ball in the middle of the field and then get up to the line of scrimmage with 30 seconds and throw the ball down and kill the clock Because the Buffalo Bills, they've got everything on the outside covered. They don't want to give that six or eight yard pattern to get out of bounds and stop the clock. But if you look at, we'll look down the middle of the field and see it. All right, Bobby Brisser took the opportunity to talk with the offensive coordinator, Zeke Sarkowski. Rodish is out, and he is, uh, he says on the side of it, when you look at him, he said, I'm all right. And so third down and 15. Completes inside the 30 yard line. A short pickup with the clock running. 20 seconds remaining. Fourth down play. And here comes Barr, who missed earlier from 21, looking to tie the game from 45 yards out. The kick by Barr. It won't make it. Roll off. try from 44 earlier today he missed from 21 and the buffalo bills are able to hang on and defeat the philadelphia eagles 10 to 7 and buffalo is now 4 and 0 against the nfc they've won 11 of the last 12 against nfc teams unfortunately for buffalo that pattern did not play out in the super bowl here's the miss by Barr. Barr got underneath the ball the ball was straight enough to make it just didn't have enough enough on the ball he looked like he hit the ball a little bit too low on the bottom of the ball and here's kotai looking at him and, oh no so the eagles drop to five and eight and the buffalo bills Extend to a record of nine and four. Marv Levy enjoying that miss by Bond. The Bills ten, the Eagles seven.